Hello, 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 hello. This is Dr. Andrea Little Mason, affectionately known as Dr. Dula. And today I am here with another birth her story um, conversation. Today I will be talking to Candace. And you know, Candace is, you know, I I I'll I'll have to tell y'all later. <laughs> She she does. I don't know if you know. I don't know if you fully know um, what you said to me the first time I met you. What Candace said to me the first time. She you know she's a little spitfire when she want to be. And um, <laughs> I was speaking at a conference, and she was like, uh, "Someone else, uh, someone else, else had come up and said something to me." But she was like, um, "Yeah, I came here to see to hear you speak too, because I want to see if you're the real deal or not." I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> but you do not know. What you don't know is that that, honey, you got all my edges gathered up. You. <laughs> I said, oh my goodness. And it really made me go deeper than what I had thought I would be thinking to go deep, go to do myself. It really made me say, wait a minute. They said they hear it. They say yes. You you were like yeah, yeah. I want to see if you're the real deal or not. Yeah. yeah, I only came to the conference because you were gonna be speaking mostly. That was like the biggest reason, honey. All my edges were gathered. I was like, let me get my life all the way together. <laughs> and you don't know. I think about that often, Candace. I think back on it, and I'm like, man, I'm grateful for you. And wait. Tanaj, yeah, y'all too, honey. Y'all had me right over in that corner. I was like, "What?" <laughs> but y'all were such a blessing to me, and you were more of a blessing than you could ever know. And so, when I saw that you had had a home birth and you started posting all your beautiful pictures, um, I was like, "Oh, another birth worker that's just doing her thing." And I wanted people to meet you, and I wanted people to know you. And to hear your story, because I really think I said, well, she gathered my edges. She might as well gather theirs, too. She'll say something. <laughs> and so, Miss Candace, would you do me a favor, please, beautiful, and tell the people who you are? Well, I'm Candace Smith. I'm a birth and postpartum doula. Um, I've been doing it for a couple of years. I started out in birth work because I realized during my the birth before last, how much support I was lacking due to my husband's deployment. So um, he actually deployed two days before she was born. So it was really close. And just going through that stage of life was like, okay, someone should be here. I shouldn't have to, you know, do this alone. Um, thankfully, my mom and my sister, they were there with me during the labor. And um, a little after for the postpartum, but not anywhere near to the the length of time that I would have needed. So yeah, really like struck a chord um, with me, and I was like, you know, this is this is if I could didn't have it, I'm going to provide it to other um, families. So that's what got me going. So um, I'm a mom of four now. <laughs> yep. So we got out out. I think it's the fourth and final surprise that, that came on the scene. So, <laughs> that we like to call it jelly bean. So, um, but yeah, I'm a mama for um, my husband already said he's in the Marine Corps. So yeah, that's pretty much it. I'm just um, really um, interested in learning and growing more and how I can support um, women and their health and, their um their lives, but mostly um around this time um in their lives at any stage really. Um just to help them feel the love and support that we all need. And sometimes we don't always get, you know, from the ones around us. So you have to create, you know, that support system. So I'm always happy to be that that person to help tie it all together. Oh my goodness. So you talked about the support that you didn't have uh before because you know your husband had just left and yeah. all these they're just deployed and so you had this little bit of help but you didn't have it broadly 
Did you ask for it? Did you find a way to ask for it? Or was it just one of those things that you look back and reflected and said, I need to make this happen? Um, well, um, my, with my mother and my sister, it was pretty natural for them to, to be around. But just due to um, us living in a different state, they weren't able to stay as long because, you know, they had to go back to work and back to, you know, their own home life. Mm-hmm. So um, with the military, there is a sort of a community there, um, depending on how well you, you get to know everyone and how long you've been in the area. And so they did meal trains and things like that. But as far as like the day to day, it was pretty much just me. So mm-hmm. some days it was fine. And some days it was like, okay, as long as everyone is safe and nobody left the house, like we had a good day. <laughs> so, <laughs> so yeah. So um, looking back, I mean, if I would have known about the services that I provide, I probably would have had that set up for when my my mother and my sister left and that yeah. definitely would have um would have helped me out a lot more for sure so wow and what kind of things did your mom and sister do for you um they provided like meals they helped with the other um kids um at the time so at the time i had a two-year-old and a five-year-old so they helped with like getting um, the five-year-old to school and just helping around the house and just being like a emotional support as well, which I think was like the biggest, the biggest help. Was um, that something? Was that something you had asked her to ask them to do? Like, hey, when I have my baby, y'all gonna, you know, will y'all come? Was that something that you requested? Um, we discussed it, but it's always been just a natural thing to to just be around. So even from with my first um, daughter, she's 10 now, They, it, I didn't have to ask them to come with me to the hospital. It was just automatically assumed like, okay, so we're, we're going now? Okay, we're leaving. You know, <laughs> so it, it wasn't, you know, it wasn't like I didn't have to ask them. No. Mm-mm. I love that. And, um, you know, because a lot of times I'll talk to you know, you know already the the type of work that I do and what I'm always talking about, you know, before they were doulas and all that, that we had community. And it really, I remember when I was, um, we had community built into like moms and sisters and people that were closer and it was easier. Mm-hmm. And I remember what my own sisters and uh, did for me, even in the absence of our mother, I right. remember what they did for me. But it's really something I love a lot of times when I'm talking to people about, you know, Hey, we need to get the family, you know, we need to, okay, fine. Some people like, I don't talk, me and my mama don't rock like that. Okay, fine. Can we start where we are and start building? For example, do you envision that the daughters that you have wouldn't feel comfortable calling you Candace, you know, right. um, you know, like starting where we are. But um, one of the things that, that I, sometimes I think people misunderstand is I'm not talking about not having, uh, not, um, doing the work. Like you said, I want to help those like after the people have to go home because our lives are different. We're far away. There's a place for that person that offers the kinds of services that, that, um, birth support and, and postpartum support and all of that. And there's also the place of family if they if that is something that's that's there they don't compete with each other do you know what right. I mean? right exactly it's not like it's uh um well if i have my mom and some well she can't do this or whatever it's really about the mother who's birthing it's really about what helps her what mm-hmm. she sees can help the people that are around her um how she feels her mom can play a role, how she feels her sister or her neighbors or who, her whomever can play a role. It's really mm-hmm. not about some prescribed way of looking at everything. Right, yeah. You know? Just do what needs to be done. That's it, yeah. So then for you, how did you get to this home birth life, girl? Well, I have always been interested in having a home birth, but this was the actual time that it actually worked out. Um, I wanted to have a home birth with my daughter that I had before this one. 
Really? Um, yeah, but um, I was living in North Carolina at the time, and the laws and rules were kind of like hard to navigate. And with like the deployment and everything coming up, I guess I didn't get to research and find the midwife that I needed and everything. I've always had a midwife um, for all of my births, except for my first one. Okay. But they were in the hospital. So, um, and it was also um, about finding a midwife that I wanted. So with all of my births, all of the providers were women of color. So that was a staple for me. And so as where we were in um, North Carolina, in Jacksonville, that wasn't available. So I didn't like think about going somewhere else, like a different state. I said, okay, well, if I find another midwife that's in a hospital, you know, then I'll just go ahead and, and do that. So it worked out. So luckily I've been blessed enough to have uh, all women of color um, to be my provider. So I didn't really have to feel like I had to explain certain things and, and um, you know, worry about other elements. So mm-hmm. it, it worked out in that, in that way. What kind of things, like when you say explain other things and elements, what kind of things from your experience or just with helping other women, have you seen that um, have to be explained that become cumbersome and just like make it harder for black women? Um, just being listened to. Um, because even with dealing with the other providers that are in the hospital, like for example, I've, I've gone to the hospital in my, um, with my son. Normally when I get to the hospital, I'm pretty much ready to go. Like I do all of the labor in at home and everything. So that, you know, I don't have to spend too much time, you know, at the hospital. So, um, <laughs> you know, I'll get there and I know where, where I'm at. I might not know any, you know, numbers that they would like, but my body tells me I'm close. So I'll get there and I'll have a, a nurse or someone and they'll, and I'm telling them like, okay, I'm having the, this pressure, I'm having contractions and they'll like pretty much second guess like, oh no, that's, that can't be pressure that, that has, I mean, that can't be contractions. It must just be pressure and you can't be that close. Like without even really knowing any information, it was just like, you have to like go the extra mile to be heard, to explain you know, not everyone, but a lot of the time I've noticed there's a difference as far as um, <laughs> she's all into that. Was like, um, hey, <laughs> uh, you know, about just listening to to what I had to say or, you know, I've had clients where they'll go to the hospital and if their situation is less ideal um, than someone would prefer, then they have all these assumptions and, and things like that, that are, you know, untrue and just unnecessary and gets in the way of, you know, just the actual care that they should be receiving. So um, I just didn't have to do that. You know, I didn't feel the need to have to go into detail or have to prep my husband too much. Like, okay, if they do this, then you need to be ready and, you know, things like that. Whereas, um, we were able to be more co- comfortable and, you know, less stress. It came as the more kids I had, the more prepared, you know, I I was. So, you know, when we first started out, it was like, okay, you know, we had to do some explaining, but as we got older and we, you know, read and learned more, then we were able to just get the birth that we desired. So I've been pretty lucky, you know, compared to a lot mm-hmm. of, other moms. I think it's, I think you said something really, really important, you know, just the whole thing of, uh, I love how you keep, you have communicated about like having to like, uh, tell your, okay, look, if they say this, if they do this, da, 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 da. And mm-hmm. I talk to people, um, and you know, clients and stuff. And, and I'm always talking to them about, even if you have a birth support person in the room, Mm-hmm. Even if you have them in the room, you know, there's a spot for that husband to play. I know for me, um, for that man, you know, maybe he's a partner or whoever your partner is. I know for me, my husband amplified my voice. Yeah. The bottom line was if I said something that was happening to my body and they were blowing me off, 
I said, you tell them, you know, whatever. And he would be like, my wife said right. she feels this and my wife knows her body. You know? Right. Yep. <laughs> exactly. And it was just, it was just a thing of, you know, I think sometimes people say, well, what role, you know, will this person play or, or what value is it? And it's, it's a real, um, it's a, it's a real value. I, mm -hmm. I, oh, yeah. And and like you said, the more the older you get, the more mature, more experience that you have, yeah. um, you can see it. One of the things that I tell people is, um, you know, I was just telling someone, it's it's amazing how you know if 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 a, if a loved one goes into the hospital for anything else, we are like on it. What are you What are you giving them? What is that and this? What is that and the other? Blah blah right. blah blah blah. Mm -hmm. No one would dare just sit over and say, well, no, they're going to take care of it. You want to wait. Hold on. What was that blood pressure? OK, hold on. Yeah. And what's that bag right there? What's what is that you're putting in, in, the, in the IV? Mm -hmm. But there's so many times that when women go into the hospital, it's like we don't we don't we know how to be if someone, you know, is sick suddenly or, or needs something. But it's like we don't we're not thinking like that necessarily when it comes to birth. Right. But yeah. why not? <laughs> exactly. I know. I know. And it's good to trust your provider. You know, you yeah. should do your research and find the doctor that, you know, resonates with you. But sometimes I'll see that voice is just it's so quiet. You know, they it's just like, oh well, the doctor said they might let me do this or let me do that. And I'm just like what do you mean? Let you, you know, like the there always is time for questions and conversation. Nothing is, you know, has to be done right now unless it's an absolute, you know, emergency. But you know, I always encourage everyone to ask questions, like get a second opinion. Just take your time and, and really get to the bottom and make sure you understand because oftentimes we'll sit back and we'll be like, Hmm. But why did they do this? So why did that need to be done? And exactly. I don't know why. Like, I don't know, you know, and it just makes you feel a certain way about it. Like, I just didn't have a choice. I didn't have control or just a lack of understanding, which, you know, it's good to have more than one um, support person, because if you have someone else that understands more, that can explain it, you know, in different terms, because sometimes the terms are being used. Can be confusing you know as well so and i like that you said that you know it it is there what in what other scenario can somebody just do something and you don't know why they did it right. in the hospital like we're not asking questions mm -hmm. and, and and sometimes people say well you know that it almost as if it's the responsibility of you know, the doctor or the whomever. And there are responsibilities that the hospital has. Mm -hmm. But we as people that, if you're going to choose to birth in the hospital, if that's what you're choosing to do. Yeah. Also, don't act as if this is different than if a loved one had come in for surgery. Right. You know, ask mm -hmm. the questions. And like you said, unless it's an emergency, I tell people all the time, I say, you'll know because they will tell you. Yep. Um, I'm sorry, we don't, have time to leave out it you know they'll tell tell you this is something we have to do right now right you know, this yeah. is something they and they can't then you know i haven't seen anybody lie about that yet usually no. it's critical mm -hmm. and it's like this is what has to be done right now then it's what has to be you know then they'll tell you that they're not going to mm -hmm. sit and murmur and say well you're making a bad you know no one's going to say a whole bunch of other stuff right yeah. um so when you decided to come home mm -hmm to have your baby. You found the black midwife? I did. Yep, I did. Because, um, again, <laughs> we were faced with moving and everything. Um, we were coming from California, and so I knew about all of the home birth midwives there, and I knew, you know, who I was going to go with, and then my husband got orders. So it left me in a tricky situation because the time frame with him moving uh, to the new state and then with me, um, like where I was going to be in my pregnancy, I said, oh, well, I don't want to go to Florida and have to find, you know, a new midwife and try to like catch up on all of this, um, you know, like what's going on with me and trying to get to know her and everything like that. So I'm just going to go home 
to Baltimore, and I feel like I know more about um, the the culture there, the the different midwives that you know I can choose and everything like that. So we agreed on that, and I found um, a midwife, and she was amazing. Like everything, really, was really good. Yeah, I saw your pictures, and I was like, first of all, why did I not know Cam Candice? No, I think I saw when you started posting about the baby, your baby, your baby bump. But I don't know. It's just it came so fast. And I know. <laughs> That's what it seems like. It did. It just came and went, especially with like a move and everything. So I, you probably saw when I posted it, but it wasn't right away. So yeah. it was kind of like a delay anyway. So, um, which was really nice. Like. You know, some people, if they like to tell everyone right away, and I kind of like to just hold off. Yes. That gives more privacy, more time to, like, think about what's going on and less opinions and, you know, everything. So it was it was nice to just, like, take, a, take it, like, slow, basically. Was it everything? Was your home birth what you expected that it would be? It was. It was. The only thing... Um, I had planned for the kids to be there, but it didn't work out that way because they, um, my mom took them to the movies. So I told my my second youngest, she was definitely like, I want to be there. The other two, they were like, eh, we're there, we're there. You know, maybe we'll walk by and see what's going on. I don't know. So she was like, I want to be there. Like, you know, so I said, okay, Ayla, you have, you can still go with mama and you'll have time. By the time you get back, you know, it should be close and, you know, everything will be good. No. She, 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 the baby came and by the time when they came back, uh, she was like, what? We missed it. And I was like, oh, I know. But then you have fun at the movies. And she was like, yeah, but, you know, that wasn't the plan. Huh? The, the whole experience was just really, really good. I, um. I really had a chance to plan everything the way I wanted it, knowing that it would be, you know, a possibility that it might not go this way or that way. But I have to say pretty much everything went smoothly the way that I wanted it to be. Like I wanted to have a home birth, but I wanted to deliver at my aunt's house. So I love her house. It's just, I don't know. It's something about it. You have to go there. It's just really comfortable and loving. And we have all of our like special occasions there, you know, like Christmas family <laughs> gatherings and everything. And it was a good location. What's going on? You sleeping? Oh. It was um a good location to uh, my midwife because um she the area that she mainly focuses on is like the DC area. And we live in the um, Baltimore City. So um, my aunt lives out, um, like, in a good in-between um, place. So it was, like, right by the midwife's um, house, like, maybe 15 minutes away. So everything worked out that way. Aww. Yeah. And so um, how, how was your laboring different at home than it was at the hospital? Um, the... Difference, well, I mainly, like I said earlier, when I labor, I always tend to labor at home anyway because I just prefer not to be at the hospital for a long time. <laughs> she said, you've been on here too long already. I gave you, you 20 minutes. <laughs> She's sleepy, that's all. Aww. But um, it's okay. It's all right. I know. She normally don't cry, but it's because we're on here. <laughs> No, no. But um, let me see. Oh, so yeah, I normally take my sweet time. I mean, when I say I don't get there until I'm like maybe like seven or eight centimeters, like I'm staying until I I probably I probably could have had other home births by accident. <laughs> but um, but this time you know it was just nice to be where I was supposed to be and not have to go anywhere because that is just you know even with the aftercare when you have to come take your baby back to the doctors and everything. I just always found that to be unnecessary and yeah. just really inconvenient. I would, I actually, I mean, to me, it just, 
doesn't i've been um in some meetings where we talk about oh what can we do to get women to breastfeed and what can we do to whatever and one of the things that um i and some others made a comment about is y'all are talking about we need these mothers to breastfeed don't they know that this did this, this we need the mothers to do it, but don't they know and you look and you say okay but y'all new 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 uh protocols and stuff have mothers leaving the house to go to you know two three days after they birth or after they get home to take the baby to the doctor mm -hmm. i said how is that caring for women they don't all have help yeah and even still you're just so out of whack i mean everything's wet <laughs> like it's just hard to even think about going somewhere and then when i do see a newly postpartum mom and she's out it just uh, looks like it was just so much to get there you know, know and, and that's whether she has a cesarean or not. I mean, it's like, right, they're not. And so, you know, she's carrying the baby in a carrier, just just things that are not very um, mom centered. But we want to focus on, hey, good. Let's let's work with the moms. Make sure they breastfeed. Let's work with the moms. Make sure they this. Let's. OK, well, what about taking care of the mothers? Right. Yeah. What What about the moms? The fact that she is out. And now she's out again, depending on what they say. She might have to go back three days later. Mm -hmm. Right. Exactly. I've seen that with, you know, if the baby's birth weight isn't where exactly. the mother wants it to be, you know, and I understand that they, you know, they want to make sure everything is good with the baby. But I'm like, it's very small times where I've seen the baby actually does the some care. But the mother is the one who is at risk for many more, you know, things. Let me Listen, you said nothing but a word because I'm telling you, I, you know, one of the things that gets me because I love postpartum care. I love being able to help new moms and that, and I'm not talking about like with all the cooking and cleaning. I love to be able to actually it's nurture her. her. Yeah. To nurture the new mom, you know, to, to, to help her body heal. So when I feel like a, a postpartum mom, she lets you touch her. That's just an amazing thing because the baby is out. So now the fact that she'll allow that to happen. And when I see a mom that has been to the doctor two or three times with her baby to check this or that or the other, but the nobody in this whole medical facility saw how this mom looked like. Yeah. yeah. Didn't even answer. You know, you see whether she's puffy, you know, very, very swollen. But nobody, you, so you went to a medical facility. Mm hmm and nobody's saying anything to you, but we're making sure your baby's okay. And that just doesn't seem, that doesn't seem like a full something that it just, it works against this ultimate goal of us, of us saying we want our babies healthy. Yeah. yeah. You know? So yeah. I totally get it when you say, you know, everything, it came, um, a friend of mine from uh, Kenya, she's like, everything should come to the new mother. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And it shouldn't have to be some concierge service, you know, like that you have to pay, you know, a, a lot of money for. Okay. The, the you know, home birthing is worth it. It's worth the investment. But if you can't afford that, then it's like you're missing a big piece of your, your healing process. Granted, you will heal. I've I've done it, you know, fine before, but it wasn't as smooth because it was so many distractions and causes that I had to do to make sure that everything was fine outside of the house, you know. And and this time, I'm like, well, I really don't have to leave. I, it's nothing for me to do out there. Like I, you know, I had everything in place. My husband took the kids to school. If I homeschool, it would have been even easier, you know. <laughs> Everybody stay here. We're good. You know, <laughs> it was really, really good to have her come back and check on us and not six weeks down the line. I'm, you know, the next day, Literally. you know, and then in the next couple days, she came back, you know, so it wasn't like if I did have any concerns with the baby, she was there to check her, you know, and um, another thing that I found really odd was when I went to like sign her up to have like her a well baby check at like the pediatrician's office. Um, they were like, so, um, so you didn't take her to the hospital at all? And I was like, I had a home birth. 
You know, why would I need to take her to the hospital? Okay, um, I understand that. So you're telling me you had the baby and you didn't take her to the to the hospital at all, ever. I was like, it was no need to. My midwife um, is also a, a homopathic pediatrician. She, even if she wasn't, she's still uh, trained to to uh, look at the baby, make exactly. sure the baby's fine. And that is just such a far fetched concept to so many people, and not just you know providers who are you know just ingrained with the this medical ways of doing everything. They just couldn't get it. They just couldn't wrap their minds around it. And this is over the phone because I'm still not leaving out. <laughs> so <laughs> you know, and they're like, I just don't understand. We have to see if you know she'll even take her because. You know, she didn't see her right away. And I'm like, well, ma'am, this is the medical assistant on the phone taking the call. So I'm like, well, you know, the one of the big benefits of having a home birth is you don't have to leave the house. There's no reason for me to bring her out to be checked when my midwife comes and she has us under her care, you know, up yeah. to two months or more if we decide to keep, you know, having her. So they're just so, their mind is blown. They're just like, <laughs> wow. I, I said, so you never had any patients who have been born via home birth? And they said, no. They wow. Haven't. And I'm like, that is really strange because um, I'm just getting her birth certificate in um, from Vital Records because there's only one lady who works there who does the birth certificates for home birth. I feel bad for her because she says, she does 30 a day and it's what? just her. So I'm like, it's 30 babies being born at home a day, at least that, you know, it's probably maybe more, but that she does a day. And you're telling me that this facility has never had a home birth baby. Uh -huh. That is really wild to me. So and, and absolutely. The home birth. It, it is. It's like, how did you miss out? You know, how did you like, how did you miss? I, <laughs> I'm trying to register it. And I don't know. Every yeah, time this I is me on the phone, your your whole expression, I'm like, you know what? I think I might call somebody else because this doesn't uh, sound like a good, a good idea anymore. This sounds like I'm in danger a little. I felt a little like I needed to hold her closer. Like, mm, I think y'all gonna call the people on me. Exactly. <laughs> it's, it's it's like you know that's exactly what I'm thinking. I'm like, okay, hold up. Just a minute, just because it reminds me of like we took our some years ago we took a car it, our one of our cars to the dealership, but it was a different one than the one we had purchased it from, and it was like it's like rolling up to the dealership, the dealership, and they're saying, "Oh wow, I've never seen one of these before." Right, oh, wow. <laughs> come here, Tom, come here. You've yeah, seen one of these before. Wait a minute. What you mean? This is the dealish. Exactly. Um, <laughs> my husband and I said, my husband's like, mm -mm. Mm. we're gonna we're gonna go somewhere else. Yeah. And this it's like the first thought is, wait a minute, okay, why? Mm -hmm. it, especially here's this woman, she's processing 30 a day. Yeah, but you've never seen one, right? Yep, never. Not I mean, hmm. And so I'm talking to the pediatrician. She said, well, I've had patients who've um, given birth at home, but they've always brought their baby within a week still to her. And that was her preference. And I'm like, okay, that's your preference. But can't you, you know, like work with the midwife and, you know, y'all can handle that without the mom still having to come physically bring you the baby, you know? That, it's, pro it's problematic to me only because it's, like I said, it, it kind of works against what people, what they say they're trying to do. Right. And, and, yeah. and, you know, when you look at it from a traditional perspective in any indigenous culture on this side of the world, on the other side of the world, a woman is open. She is open during that time. Mm -hmm. And whether it's a cesarean that's major surgery, you're still telling her. You know, you have some people that say, okay, don't lift more than whatever for so-and-so because they got some whatever surgery. A woman who's had a cesarean has been open up, this, that, the other, all these other things, and you still want to see that baby there 
Oh yeah. On day whatever. Yeah. And I'm not saying that we shouldn't be care we shouldn't be mindful of our babies and what's going on with them. But the notion that the the mother leaving the house and the mother and and I love the fact that it's like when I listen to you like listen you still want me to come out of this house. I'm not going. I'm not <laughs> I'm not going. I just can't even You made it so it's like you got it real simple. It's not even that deep. And I love it that you I love it that you're saying it that way because in my mind it's like that's what I you know when I hear any any conversations I have, you know, where people start getting on the new moms, oh they're not doing this and they're not doing that. I'm like I I said in one meeting I was like, "Okay, um, they were talking about, oh, we make, we check for postpartum, you know, care to make sure they have support. I said, what does support mean? Mm-hmm. Well, we have a rubric and we ask them, okay, so what do you have? Anybody can help you clean? Anybody can help you this? Anybody do that, 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 what, da, 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 da. I said, and they said, and then based on that, then we asked them this and we asked them that. I said, uh, one of the issues I have is that even since, even some of the things that you all are talking about as far as support, the difference is that traditionally when you say you care for a birthing mother and you care for a postpartum mother, the mother had to do nothing. Nothing. I've had a a client um, originally from India. And when I say she doesn't have to do anything, nothing, nothing. And it's, she, she, this was in California. And so, even with visitors, they came, but they left things at the door. Unless you were su- assigned to help the mother and the baby inside the home, they didn't ask to see the baby. They didn't ask to see the mother. They just send their wishes, let her know I came, you know, and here's the food. Say it. Leaving. Say it. Days. How many? 40 days. Say it again, girl. Come on now. <laughs> I was like, this is amazing. And she didn't have to explain anything. Whereas, you know, we can try to explain. And I know it's the excitement of the new baby, but it's like, oh, when, when can I see the baby? Oh, how's the baby? And I'm like, hey, I'm over here. You know, just had a whole baby. Nobody's asking me anything. How am I? Can they help me with? It's just, when can I see the baby? You know, and if you say, oh, we're having a baby moon, it's like, oh, having a baby moon. So what? You don't, you know, you're just so this and that, that you can't let us see the baby or you don't have time to talk. And it's just a total disregard for that healing time, you know, that process to even process what has happened. Exactly. You know, it's not just, oh, you have a baby and everything is just back to normal. Like you have to really have time, months to even just grab the new idea of of it all, you know? And with me, I've noticed that since this is my fourth, I'm getting a lot of, oh, well, you've done this before. Oh, you know what to do. Oh, you know, like, and I'm like, okay, yes, I have done this before, but this is not the same baby. You know, everything's different. I have three other children as well. And, you know, I get what they were saying, like, oh, like, you're a good mom. I, I've seen you. You you can handle it. But it's like, I still need that, you know, support. I still need that time, you know, to adjust. But everyone's like, oh, you got it. It's fine. You don't need any help. You got this. This is this is where, in my mind, I think that we, you know, especially as Black women, just assimilated and laid down our culture just way too much. Yeah. Because that is not... I repeat, not how, you know, even 60, 70, 50, 60, 70, that wasn't how that was done. Yeah. And I said, it it really gets me. Um, I remember I was doing one of my Africa to the diaspora interviews um, and each one of them, they always talk about how it's, you know, they have, they all have a word uh, for the new mom. And so I think it's Zulu is um, umlezani. And so a mother is said to be that umlezani. I'm saying it wrong. I'm sure somebody's going to tell me. Umlezani is said to be that because she just birthed the baby. It also, like for them, it might mean she's breastfeeding. She just had the baby, the whatever. It's all the postpartum, the first weeks of postpartum, you know, of this postpartum thing. Mm -hmm. But with 
consistently, all of them, every baby, because I was told the same thing. I have four sons. Every baby is in your new mother every single time you have a Absolutely. baby. Absolutely. Yeah. Every Maybe single time. more now than I feel <laughs> than I was the first time. I don't know. Maybe it's the age difference or what, but I felt, you know, like, oh yeah, I'm bouncing back. But this, you know, as it, as it goes, I'm like, hmm, more understanding, you know, less worry and less, I have more patience to slow it down. You know, you really are reborn again. Yes. Sure. Every baby, every birth, it makes you a new mother. Mm -hmm. And the fact that we don't honor that or that, you know, we have become so focused on the baby and the mother is just over there. Yeah. I mean, literally, the mom can be over wherever and everyone is doting over the baby, which is not bad. But I love what you described about your previous client, where it was like, um, this is this is healing time. This is whatever. And if you're not assigned to her, it's not time for guests yet. No. And it was no question. No one that, you know, they didn't blink twice. They just knew their roles. And this is even with her being in the States. And now she had no family here. Yes. In the States. She, this is still her people that she has found in her community that she might have found at work or just someone in the neighborhood. Like it's just automatically assumed, you know, that this is what we do. This is how it is. You know, I, I just always say that, you know, we talk about, um, I talk about and others will talk about, you know, the things that we laid down as black women with our um, birth. And I believe there are remnants, remnants of it everywhere. But one of the things that I'm also a proponent of is just like you said, she found her people, you know, and the people that understood her traditions, her, you know, and nobody questioned it. No. And what I find with when you were describing earlier, just having to explain, mm -hmm. you know, why certain things would be like they are, or you would feel certain things as a black woman you know, in it, you know, dealing with birth and all these other things. And the reason why a lot of black women do prefer to have someone that another black person um, serving and caring for them and supporting them. It's important because a lot of times in, um, especially in this society, people act as if black women don't have a culture. Right. It's just, well, whatever, you know, it's assumed that no one, see, see, you said she was Indian, right? Yeah. The Indian sister, people were okay with her having a culture. Exactly. Oh, yeah. Okay. Latina sister, people are okay with her having a culture. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You can call out anybody. But when you say black women. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Because I've even had some pushback from saying that I want, I will have a midwife of color period you know and they're like okay well you know we have this person this person and you can take them there you know that's racist and you know all of that and i'm like as long as my husband knows this is what we're looking for we're good i don't have time to explain exactly. you know, <laughs> why he, he he understands you know this is what we're doing here and it's just a feeling of comfort you know i it just feels like you know we just all have a connection whether anyone you know wants to admit it or not or right. they you know they want to say oh black women can't get along and that's totally untrue yes it is I, I don't know if you feel that way as a black woman you are missing out because there's no way you know we just have a way of connecting with each other on another level and you don't even have to say anything that's right. you know so it's just like, okay, I'm having a baby. This is serious. It's no other person who can support me. Yes, they, you know, you can have a baby with any midwife. It's, you know, but you, it can be done, you know. But emotionally, I need that connection, you know, to just let me do what I need to do, you know. And that's another reason why I wanted to have a home birth because um, I just don't like any interventions. I don't like a lot of distraction. A lot of, well, let me check. Let me check. 
you. You know, let me do your tip. You know, I did. It's all necessary. But with this home birth, I never got checked once. Wow. I don't. She didn't touch me unless it was welcome. You know, she. That- she just. She knew what to do, and it was just like okay, because I'm a quiet like birther. Like I don't uh, want to have a lot of talking. I don't like to hear a lot of noise, and so everyone in that space honored that. They knew, you know. I have my husband there, my midwife, my sister, and we were at my aunt's house, and she was there, but she wasn't there. Like it was like okay, if you need me. You know, someone let me know. Not me, but someone else there let her know. And it was just like so serene. Like it just, everything just flowed so nicely because it was like, okay, these are the rules. No one's getting an attitude about it. Nobody feels like they need to step over what I'm saying, you know, because they know better than what they what I need than, than I do. You know, it was just like, no, what do you need to check you for? It doesn't give the whole picture anyway. Oh. You know? So the funny thing about it was she was the only time she was going to check me was when I was going to get into the water just to make sure I wasn't too um, far away from, you know, progressing. So I didn't, she didn't even get to do it because I coughed and then my water broke. <laughs> <laughs> and then she was pretty much ready to come at that point. But I just love that whole hands off. Thing. And when I had the interview with her, she I explained that to her. And this is what I have done all for since the first, since the second through the fourth. You know, I've always said, okay, what do, what are your thoughts on just leaving me alone? Pretty much, you know, <laughs> like being there, but not being too too much, too overbearing, too you know, all in, in my face. I just I just want everybody to be there quietly. You know, that's it. Nothing, nothing. I'm not high maintenance at all. Just be quiet. Right. <laughs> Don't say you know? nothing. And she was like, oh, that's fine with me. I'll be in the corner if you need me. And she was. And if it seemed like I needed, you know, some more support, hands-on support, she showed my husband how to do hip squeezes, you know, things like that. Really got him involved um, because he knows I'm normally like, okay, as long as you're there, but I don't need anyone like touching me, you know, and things like that. But I also thought about it like, hmm, I probably put up, you know, some kind of wall too. He probably was too afraid to do it, you know, to have that. But it's good to have that connection, you know, uh, through birth. So she like nicely guided him in to know what to do because it's kind of hard to explain when you're in the moment. So it's good to, you can practice all these things beforehand, but when it's action time, it, it might not go that way. You know? And so I, I tell my clients, like, okay, you know her this way, but when she's in labor, she might say some things, might hurt your feelings, let it roll off your back. Don't worry about it. You know, say what you know. Just, just don't even listen. Don't worry about it. It's okay. <laughs> she don't mean it. <laughs> she don't mean it. She ain't mean it. She be fine. right. She, she, don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. You know. So it was really good to just have that voice and not have to, you know, look for it to say, oh, well, maybe we can try this or, you know, like she was totally open to just letting my body do what it needed to do, you know. I I think that is just so wonderful. I love how um, I was, I was just telling a client, I was just uh, telling her, I was like, um, you know, that you, you know, I know you and your husband, y'all get along and, and, and y'all business partners and y'all everything, but you got to learn how to communicate on this other level. It's going to be totally different. Right. Said you could get to the place where like me, my husband, he's sitting there, you know, sometimes he like to touch it. Mm, don't just put your hand there. Don't, don't move. I put my yeah. hand on him, like, stop moving. And then it'd be like, mm, you're breathing. Stop. stop right. Breathing. <laughs> but don't look, but don't move your hand. Right, right, yeah. Now you figure that out. Right, yeah, yeah. You figure yeah, you hold this breath just enough. <laughs> yeah. But I I love I love so much of what you said. Um so much so that it's like I I envision you almost like in the future and just 
like right now you're in the thick of all of these babies and little ones and stuff, but I envision you in the future because I look at all the different things you say, you know, whether you're saying, you know, why do we have to leave? You know, what what is all this touching? What is all this doing and wanting? And and one of the favorite things that I love was when you talk, um, as you were talking, I was just hearing how it's like, look, this is what I want. We don't have to have a big whatever about it. This is how I want it. And should I change in the middle of what I'm saying? You know, yeah. Did everybody shift with me? Exactly. Oh, yeah. I'm always telling people about um, how, you know, it's the mother that's centered. But depending on the birth setting and and whether you have, you know, like, you know, hey, if you don't care that somebody watching the game, you know, football game or basketball game and that bouncing ball don't bother you and, screams don't bother you, that's fine. But what right. I also find is that there are women that um, if they're birthing, they won't say anything. You right, know? right. They want, you know, if, if for example, like you said, well, maybe, you know, it was a wall put up, like sometimes things can happen and, and somebody, don't nobody want to do nothing wrong. Mm-hmm. That mom can just start feeling like, well, I just want everybody to be comfortable. Let me just right, right. everybody be comfortable. And um, those are some of the things that I think affect our birth experiences more than we acknowledge. Just the fact Ooh. that it's not centered around the mother. Once again, we're talking about centering this around the mother, around the birthing, the person that is birthing and not the not everybody else's comfort. Exactly. Exactly. You know, and so I just really, really appreciate that. Um, You talked about when I have my, you know, I tell my clients, I tell my clients, whatever, whatever, whatever. Um, Right now, you're not doing your birth work because mm-hmm. you got enough going on. Oh, yeah. <laughs> have you, you said you're in North, oh, wait, you said you're in North Carolina. Where are you? Baltimore, Maryland. Baltimore. Okay. Um. How, because I've, I've, what I feel is that they're going to be people that really are interested and in just maybe connecting with you. you. Said some really powerful things just about, you know, how you've matured as a mother who, who's birthing, what that feels like as a woman. And and I, I listened to you talk. Okay, the first time it was like this, but then the next time I was more like, you know, whatever. And we we found our voice and we found our whatever. And I think that there are people that even before you get to back to like doing the work, the work that there are people that might want to reach out to you just because you have so much wisdom that you are just bottling up, you know, so much insight about things. And I want to make sure that, um, they can reach out to you. But before that, um, what, what word would you give or offer to a mom, whether it's a new mom or whatever, or just a mom that's really like, whether, I mean, whether she's birthing at home or the hospital, but just that, what would you say? What do, what do you what do you say to your clients? You know, what would you say? Just mm-hmm. any kind of advice you would give to someone that was like, I'm about to birth. And let's go ahead and make her a black woman. Why not? Okay. <laughs> um, what I would say would be, Uh, I know I mentioned before about you you can prepare, but you can't be fully prepared, but you can actually um, create an ideal situation, you know, around you. So take that time to figure out who you need in your circle. Doesn't have to be a lot of people, but who can you count on? Who's going to be there? Who's going to do what you need to be done? You know, start talking to those people before the baby comes. You know, just start setting up like your dream team, basically. Mm. Have them come, you know, and just talk with them. Let them know, like, okay, I might not know exactly how this is going to go, but I do know that it will be a lot easier if I have the support. You know, and that might even mean eliminating some people who might not, you know, help you create that atmosphere that you need. So really, you know, just take the time to think that out, to know, you know, the people that have been there or who will be there. And some people might even surprise you, you know, the ones that you think will be there, you know, they might not show up, but the ones who, you know, you've met along the way, you know, they could really rise to the occasion. So just take that time to get the people in your, um, in your circle. And that also includes providers, 
you know, after even when the baby comes, you know, pediatricians, things like that, who are going to be on the same page as you. You don't have to fight anyone along the way, basically. So I just say just take that time and try to plan it out if you can have that postpartum help because you know, a lot a lot of the times, even though being a mother is it comes it comes natural but not always easy, you know, for some. And some people it takes a little longer to just listen to their instinct. So just um, you know, don't be afraid to reach out for help. You know what I mean? So I just I don't want anyone to think they have to do it alone because it's nearly impossible. Believe me. I <laughs> I don't know how I've done it some sometimes. And I think that's how I, I've gotten to this place with this last birth. I just knew like, okay, I need these people in line because it's just it's too hard to do it by yourself. So just have that support set up. I just want you to know how proud I am of everything. I see y'all watching you online and I see the stuff that you're doing and I'm just, I see so much for you outside of this, um, you know, mothering young ones stage. I just see you in such a different way. Um, and I don't know why I just keep saying that to you, but I want you, I, I just want you to know what I see in you. I'm so proud of you, Candace. Thank like, you. I appreciate that. Yeah. Just, I'm glad we're connected for sure. Like you have no idea. Oh, yeah. Girl, you just, I mean, you just, uh, it, I, I, I think about you and I remember myself in younger years and I was homeschooling and, you know, so I, I was with mine all the time. And if I, I never had the home birth, but pretty much I'm like, dang, I kind of got that home birth and seen what it was like to just be, but, um, there's so many things that when I look at you and I look and I say, oh, she's going to be something else. And I just see it. I love how you are, are. It feels like you're taking in the moments, like you're really living your life in a way where you're being honest with where you are. Mm -hmm. And at the same time, just going with it. Like you really, you're, um, I love how you just keep saying, you know, you don't have to do it alone. And I know that it's because you process that out for yourself. Oh yeah. As oh, opposed yeah. to, girl, you can do it. Just you, just, you just gotta do it. You just gotta no, do it. No, and I think honestly, I think that's what's killing us. You know, it's just too. It's too much. It's just too much. And I think knowing that, I'm like, I refuse to go down that road. I'm. I gotta protect my mental. I can't be pushed that way. You know, a lot of the times we're giving too much too soon. Just we just have to handle everything and we're strong and we are, we've always been, but I think it's time that we need to really be honest and say, okay, yes, I, you know, I have done this in the past, but that doesn't mean I expect you to do it, you know, because sometimes I've gotten, you know, from elders like, oh, well, I raised this, that, and the third and I did it so you can do it. And I'm like, and you, you barely made it, you know, we can't do it by ourselves. We just can't, you know, it's time to be honest about it, you know, to say, yes, I did raise five, six kids and it was hard. And so what do you need? Not okay. you can do it, you know? So yeah, I'm just all about being more being honest because I think we don't share our stories enough because we, you know you'll feel like well I must be doing something wrong because nobody else is saying it's hard nobody else is telling me about how they struggled in the beginning like no one else is saying it and it's all we always hear all of this postpartum depression and things like that but we don't hear the in between the stories of the everyday. And when a mom is reaching out, we're like, oh, you're fine. You're complaining. Like you can do it. Just keep pushing. And sometimes people are just pushed too far. So I'm all about just trying to be transparent. And I'm realizing this on this um, new journey that I'm on with this baby. It's just to let people know what I need. Period. I'm not trying to be brave this time. I'm not trying to, you know, prove any points, even though people swear, you know, I can do it and I'm sure I can, but I'm not, I refuse to do it by myself. There's no, no way. None. Mm -mm. I love it. I, <laughs> I, you know, cause we stand strong about everything else. I love everything. that. 
we stand, we tell people what we ain't going to do and what we are going to do. And I love that you like, listen, listen, I ain't going to sit here and pretend like I got it and it's all good and it's all whatever. And I love mm-hmm. that. And that's, I think, what I see in you. You got It's like an old, like a something. And you're like, listen. Yeah. It's, it's like, not doing it again. And it's and it's, I had to learn that lesson that way, but it, it at least did give me more perspective of what I need to do and what I can teach, you know, others, offer other people this perspective. Like here, this is it. I'm, you know, you will experience it for yourself, but you don't have to do it hard if it, if you don't need have to. Please don't, please. And that's thank you for everything that you have shared because I do think it's part of what's hurting us. I absolutely do. That's my belief as well. And it's not a popular one because people have told me, you are victim shaming. Well, okay, no. What I'm saying is that my personal belief is that um, some of the practices of majority culture and the way things have been done in the, in, in the dominant culture um, do not serve us well. And that's not to say that... Uh, a white mom or somebody doesn't need help. I'm specifically, I, I, I'm, I'm advocating for black women right now. Yeah. And I'm saying that some of the things we've adopted as our own do not serve us. And when we have much less, we're poor, we're not included in society and everything else, we had better outcomes. Oh, yeah. I'm, as a researcher saying, we need to actually look at that and not ignore the fact that while it might be something that we're like, oh, you know, um, n- no, you know, she don't need no help. Okay, but that's not what our great great grands thought, because they told her. I, I I've been I, when I talk to my elders, they're like, oh, yeah. So I was asking my um aunt about my mother's birthing experience because she hasn't been here since I, I, I my mother never met any of her grandkids on this side, and um. <laughs> She was like, yeah, they went up there when your mama had y'all. That's back when they believed that the mama's supposed to sit in them all hot, hot, dark rooms. They ain't supposed to do nothing. That's what my husband's grandmother said. She said it was dark. Like, Girl. I was like, whoa. And, you know, that was something that my grandmother passed away um, a couple of years ago. And at the time, like I talked to her and I asked her questions, but if I knew what I knew now, man, I would have, she would have been tired of me. She, I would have been asking her so many questions. Like she had 12 children. Like she could have definitely told me so, so much. All, all I know knew was that she was able to birth in a hospital, which was really um, different, different compared to some other people. Um, I don't know if it's where was she in Maryland. Yes, it's it. probably because there. Because I talked to my aunt, and she, uh, they were talking about like uh, they're in Virginia. We're in the Virginia area too. So some of that they got to birth in a hospital. Yeah, yeah. So she birthed at a hospital, and but I didn't get her actual experience while she was there. I don't even know if she remembered it. I just know that she said she went to the hospital. And the only time her kids were away from her was when she was at the hospital having a baby. And then she would come back, you know, home and they would bring their children and everything. But I would have picked her brain so much. But my husband's grandparents are thankfully still um, living. So I'm able to ask them questions. And she definitely said it was dark. (laughs) And um, I'm like, okay. I even talked to my aunt actually uh, maybe like two weeks ago. And she said that the ladies in the neighborhood would yell at her for being in the window. They yeah. were like, you're open. Get out of that window. Get out that window. I'm like, she just stuck her head out. But it was, you know, that's how intense it was. And they, they wanted to protect her that much. You know, just stay in the house. Don't even stick your head out the window, you know. You have me about to scream at the at the end of this interview because... <laughs> I'm telling you, first of all, but besides the fact that I, I feel you in a certain way, which is something, because I do feel you in a certain way. Then you taught all these different things. My my great aunt, she was like, you couldn't even, they didn't even want you to open the black. They, you had to stay in that old hot room. She said, whether you had the baby in the summertime or the wintertime. Yeah, yeah. That old dark room. 
and she talked and it just what you said you said what i'm going in let us end with they cared that much about protecting her oh yeah and if we care about protecting black women maybe some things look different maybe some things aren't done the same but there is more that we can do to oh, become yeah. the protectors again. And that is not something that's, oh, I have to be a doula to do that. You just said the women on the block. Oh, I had a friend, my sister in South Africa, she said if she was going around barefoot or something, and she said the random, because they call them auntie, she's like, aunties would be like, why? You're not covered. You're not this. Why are you out? What are you doing? Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, but we've adopted different parts of, you know, of, of, of the dominant culture. And I get it. But I'm just saying that some of this stuff that we call old, first of all, we can stop trying to act like everybody else had a culture and we didn't. Yes. That's number one. Mm -hmm. We did it. We did. And we do. Yeah. Okay. And number two, all black women have a responsibility to protect each other. Oh yeah. And you don't have to be, you don't have to go through some certain thing to say, oh, well, when I get this and I'll start caring or I'll start whatever. We are the protectors. We 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 protect ourselves and we care. We 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 care about that. And we don't have to let it be framed in a way where it's like, oh well, once I get this, then I can help or I can do. No. Oh. We can meet that need. We can do that thing. Mm -hmm. I appreciate you so much. Yes. Thank you for having me. I do. Tell people how they can get in touch with you. Because if they felt what I feel for you, then I know that they gonna, they feel that wisdom of the ages in you. How can people get in touch with you? Um, well, if they're on Facebook, they can um, just search my name, um, Candace Smith Doula, and go ahead and send me a message, add me. Um, Instagram can um, underscore doula. They can find me on there as well. And um, I also have another Instagram page, Chameleon Doula Co. So go ahead and find me on there. Thank you, beautiful. I'm so, I appreciate so much you spending time with me today. Yeah, I could do oh. this all day, literally, like for sure. We, I have to maybe call you just randomly. I know, right? <laughs> I do. I just, I appreciate you for so many different reasons. I don't know why I feel you so deeply. I just really do. Good. I'm glad. I'm glad. That means I need to make my way there. Yes. I feel you like this. And I'm like, why am I feeling Candace so deep? But I do. And I appreciate you so much um, for what you're doing, even in not physically being like, oh, I'm doing, you know, some kind of birth work right now. You're doing more than you know. Thank yeah. you for focusing on your babies. Thank you for being an example uh, for women so that when it's time for you to go talk again, you're talking from a place of knowing and not because it's a great idea, it's because it's what you've done. Yeah. yeah. And so I commend you for that. Thank all you. right. You all, I will have Candace's information listed below. Candace, I love you, love you, love you. I'm going to have to get close to you again at some point so I can give you some hugs and kisses all over yeah. the movies and stuff. Yeah. All right. You guys, we will see you next time. Thank you for spending time with me. Uh, thank you for being here for this Birth Her Story interview. And please reach out to Candace. I know Candace, get, Candace is doing some stuff. Thank you, Candace. I appreciate you. Yes, no problem. Bye. Bye.